Ever wondered how you'd whip up a delicious meal if you found yourself in a survival scenario? It's a fascinating topic, isn't it? Survival cooking. It's not just about filling your stomach or meeting your nutritional needs. Though, of course, those are critical. But there's so much more to it. Food, you see, is one of those simple pleasures that can keep our spirits high, even when we find ourselves in the most challenging situations. It's comfort, it's morale, it's a reminder of home and normalcy. Think about it. You're out on a camping trip, surrounded by nature's beauty. The air is crisp, the scenery breathtaking. But as the sun sets and the temperature drops, your stomach starts to grumble. A packet of dried food or a can of beans might keep you from starving, but wouldn't a hot, delicious meal just hit the spot? Or imagine you're caught in a natural disaster. Everything is chaos and resources are scarce. You're scared, you're tired, and you're hungry. In the midst of all this, being able to cook a simple, tasty meal can be a beacon of hope, a moment of respite. Survival cooking skills can also come in handy in other SHTF. That stuff hits the fan. Situations. Maybe you're lost in the wilderness, or perhaps the power's out for an extended period. Knowing how to whip up a meal with limited resources can be a game changer. But how do you do it? How do you transform basic, often limited ingredients into something that not only fills your stomach but also lifts your spirits? How do you create a meal that's not just about survival, but also about enjoyment, comfort, and morale? It's a captivating puzzle, isn't it? And one that we're going to solve together. So how would you go about cooking a hearty meal in the wilderness? Let's find out! First things first, what ingredients would we have on hand in a survival situation? In the wilderness of uncertainty, survival is a game of resourcefulness. Let's talk about the different types of food that might be available to us. Canned goods, for instance, are a survivalist's best friend. They're long-lasting, easy to store, and can provide a variety of options from vegetables and fruits to beans and meats. Then there are dried foods. Dehydrated fruits, vegetables, and meats are lightweight, making them an ideal choice for those on the move. They may not offer the most appealing texture, but they're packed with nutrients and can be easily rehydrated for consumption. Don't forget about grains and legumes. Foods like rice, lentils, and oats are compact, nutrient-dense, and can be cooked in a multitude of ways. They're also a fantastic source of energy, giving you the fuel you need to face the challenges of the wild. But what if our canned and dried supplies run low? That's when we turn to wild edibles. Now, we're not talking about a gourmet foraging experience here. We're talking about survival. You'd be surprised at what nature has to offer if you know where to look. Berries, nuts, edible plants, and even insects can provide valuable nutrition in a pinch. Remember, even in survival situations, a balanced diet is crucial. It's not just about filling your stomach, it's about providing your body with the nutrients it needs to function effectively. Protein for muscle repair, carbohydrates for energy, fats for long-term fuel, and vitamins and minerals for overall health. These are the building blocks of survival. With a little knowledge and creativity, even the most basic ingredients can be transformed into something nourishing and palatable. It's not about gourmet dining. It's about getting the most out of what you have. Now that we know what we might have to work with, let's move on to the cooking process. Cooking in a survival situation isn't about gourmet meals, but that doesn't mean our food has to be bland and unappetizing. In the wild, you have to make the most out of what you have. Limited ingredients and tools shouldn't dampen your culinary spirits. Let's dive into some basic cooking techniques that are suitable for survival situations. First up is boiling. This is one of the simplest and safest ways to prepare food. It not only makes the food palatable, but also kills any harmful bacteria. All you need is a heat source and a vessel to hold water. You can boil anything from roots and tubers to greens and even meat, turning them into a hearty stew or soup. Next, we have roasting. This is a fantastic way to bring out the natural flavors of your ingredients. You can roast food over an open flame or in the embers of your fire. This method works well for larger pieces of meat, vegetables, or even some fruits. Lastly, there's smoking. This method is more about preservation than immediate consumption. By exposing your food to smoke, you dry it out and add a layer of flavor at the same time. Smoked food can last for several days, making it a great option when you're unsure of your next meal. Now, how do we make the most out of limited ingredients? Well, the key lies in creativity and adaptability. You might not have a pantry full of spices, but you can use herbs, bark, and other plants to add flavor to your dishes. Remember, nutrition is crucial. Prioritize protein-rich foods like nuts, seeds, and any animal protein you can secure. Also, don't forget about the power of presentation. 
even in the wilderness, a well-presented meal can boost morale and make the food more appetizing. So take a moment to arrange your food, even if it's on a flat rock or a leaf. Now let's put these principles into practice with a sample meal. Now that we understand the basics, let's cook a sample survival meal together. Picture this, you're in the wilderness, miles from the nearest grocery store or restaurant. You have a handful of basic ingredients and tools at your disposal. You're hungry and you need to get creative. Today, we're going to do just that. We're going to show you how to whip up a delicious survival meal using only what Mother Nature provides. Our first step is to gather our ingredients. We're keeping things simple today, focusing on stuff you'd likely have on hand in a survival scenario. Think canned goods, dried foods, and anything you might forage. For today's meal, we'll be using canned beans, a packet of instant rice, a few spices, and some wild greens we've foraged from our surroundings. Next, we need a heat source. In a survival situation, this would likely be a fire. Now remember, safety first. Always make sure your fire is controlled and never leave it unattended. The trick with cooking over an open flame is to create a bed of hot coals. This gives us steady, even heat, just like your stove at home. Now, let's get cooking. We're going to start with our canned beans. Open the can and pour the contents into a pot. If you don't have a pot, an old can or a sturdy non-plastic container can work in a pinch. Just make sure whatever you're using is clean and safe for cooking. Place your pot on the edge of your fire where it can get heat without being directly in the flames. Stir occasionally to keep things from sticking and burning. While our beans are heating up, let's tackle the rice. Instant rice is a great survival food because it's lightweight, easy to carry, and quick to cook. All you need is boiling water. If you have a second pot, you can boil water over the fire. If not, you can heat water in a metal water bottle or another heat-safe container. Add the rice to the boiling water and let it cook. Now, for our wild greens. Foraging can be a great way to supplement your survival diet, but you need to know what you're doing. Only eat plants you can positively identify, and when in doubt, leave it out. Today, we're using dandelion greens, which are abundant and packed with nutrients. Rinse your greens in clean water, then add them to the pot with the beans. Finally, let's talk about flavor. In a survival situation, you're not going to have a pantry full of spices at your disposal, but a few basic seasonings can go a long way. Salt and pepper are obvious choices, but don't overlook other options. Many wild plants and flowers can add flavor to your meals. Today we're adding a bit of wild garlic we found near our campsite. Once everything is cooked, combine your beans, rice, and greens. Stir well and let the flavors meld together. And voila, you have a hearty, nutritious meal that will keep you fueled and focused, all cooked with minimal tools and ingredients. Now this is just a sample meal. The beauty of survival cooking is its versatility. Once you understand the basics, you can get creative. Swap out beans for canned meat or fish. Use different wild greens or add in edible berries for a touch of sweetness. The possibilities are endless. The key to successful survival cooking is preparation and knowledge. Know what foods to pack and how to use them. Understand how to safely build and maintain a fire. Learn to identify edible plants in your area. And most importantly, practice. The more you practice these skills, the more confident you'll be if you ever need to use them. And there you have it, a delicious meal cooked in the great outdoors. But why is this skill so important? Being able to cook in a survival situation is about more than just filling your stomach. Now let's delve into the significance of survival cooking. It's easy to underestimate the importance of a good meal, especially when faced with the immediate concerns of a survival scenario. But food, more than just a source of energy, is a beacon of hope, a comforting reminder of normalcy even in the toughest times. Consider morale. In a survival situation, maintaining a positive outlook is just as crucial as maintaining your physical health. A warm, hearty meal can lift spirits, giving you the motivation and mental fortitude to push through adversity. It's not just about the taste of the food, but the emotional sustenance it provides. Picture this. You're in the wilderness, the situation is grim, but then you manage to cook a simple yet satisfying meal. Suddenly things don't seem so bad, right? Of course, let's not forget the obvious. Health and energy. In survival scenarios, your body is your best tool. You need to keep it running efficiently, and that means providing it with the right nutrients. Survival cooking isn't about gourmet meals, it's about maximizing the nutritional value of whatever food you have. It's about knowing how to prepare food in a way that retains or even enhances its nutritional content. You want to keep your energy levels up to keep you active, alert, and capable of facing any challenges that come your way. Lastly, 
there's a sense of normalcy that comes with the act of cooking. In the midst of chaos, cooking can be a grounding experience, a routine that brings a semblance of order and control. It's a tangible, hands-on task that provides a sense of achievement and purpose, a stark contrast to the uncertainty of survival situations. So, you see, survival cooking is more than just about sating hunger. It's about boosting morale, maintaining health and energy, and grounding oneself amidst the chaos. Survival cooking isn't just a skill, it's a lifeline. So next time you're planning a camping trip, why not try cooking a meal, using only what you might have in a survival situation? We've journeyed together through the landscape of survival cooking, from understanding the survival scenario to gathering ingredients, mastering the art of cooking, and finally, savoring a meal cooked with minimal resources. Remember, the essence of survival cooking is not just about filling your belly, but also about nourishing your spirit. It's an art form that speaks to our primitive roots and our ability to adapt. So whether you're facing a survival situation or not, keep practicing these skills. In the end, whether you're camping under the stars or weathering a storm, it's the taste of a well-cooked meal that can make all the difference. We're genuinely interested in discovering the topics you'd like to watch. Don't hesitate to share your suggestions in the comments below. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the like button to stay updated with our latest content on the YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.